Obi-Wan. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. So I haven't gotten to talk about Star Wars in quite a while, so let's get to that. And it's some good news this time, because last big Star Wars news that happened was all the stuff going on with the uh, the Han Solo movie, and yeah, this I think this is better news than that. So the report is, and hopefully it hasn't been refuted by the time I put this video out, but the report is is that they are finally moving forward with an Obi-Wan Kenobi solo Film. This would be set um, between the prequels and the original with episode four, A New Hope. Um, or at least that's the presumption. So, because, I mean, really, when else would you set it unless you're going to do Obi-Wan at like age 10? And God, nobody wants that. So, there's your sweet spot. And so, not only is this apparently in the works, and honestly, it's been rumored for a very long time with no confirmation ever coming from Lucasfilm on it, um, but the big word is that they have a director attached to it. And it's the guy who directed Billy Elliot? Yeah, so apparently Lucasfilm is in talks with, if have not already tapped, Stephen Daltrey, of all people, to not only direct the film, but to help get the script and story into a shape that they'll be ready to move forward on. And that is a slightly odd pick. I mean, there's nothing in his um, in his resume that screams, you know, Star Wars or genre stuff in general. I mean, to be fair, that's, you know, I don't want to pigeonhole the guy. I don't know what his interests are aside from the movies that he's done, but he's never really done anything with a particularly fantastical bent to it. Um, like I said, Billy Elliot is probably the best known thing he's done. Now, I have to be upfront about the fact that I've actually never seen a movie this guy has directed because he specializes in films that just aren't for me. And I'm sure they're fine. They're just, it's not the kind of stuff I tend to gravitate towards. So I actually haven't seen anything the man's ever made. However, given, you know, the pedigree looking at it, his stuff does tend to get nominations for stuff. I mean, Billy Elliot especially has a heck of a legacy to it. So, I mean, I, I certainly would not presume that he's a bad director or a bad storyteller. He seems to have some skill. Just again, it initially seems like an odd pick, except that you kind of think about it, Kenneth Branagh was an odd pick to Thor, but then again, again, if you thought about, you know, the Shakespearean operatics of it, that fit kind of made sense. So the other thing I can think of is like maybe behind all of the sort of, you know, serious minded Oscar bait kind of movies this guy was making that his, in his own personal passion, he really liked Star Wars and that it just never entered it into his work before. I don't know, but that's the, that's kind of the only thing I can come up with. But Regardless of whether or not he's a genre guy, which clearly he's not, at least in terms of his resume, he is an established filmmaker with a good, solid track record. And I think Lucasfilm is learning from the debacle that has gone on with the Han Solo movie, which is that if they're going to get a director who is somebody with vision to bring them in early in the process so that they are working on the story and they are putting the script into a shape that everybody is agreeing on. Because I think a big part of where everything went off the went off the rails with the Han Solo movie is they got Lord and Miller in to work on a script that was already done and these are guys who are you they're they're not real I mean they're directors for hire insofar as they've just gotten attached to various stuff but they've also been allowed to shape the story of those things and to, they're not guys you can just throw on a script and go do that script so I think Lucasfilm has wisened up to the fact like, okay, if we're getting visionary people, if we're not doing Marvel's current thing, which is to largely get people from TV or people who are just going to more or less work with the very specific set of pieces we give them, then we need to get them in early enough in the process that they can feel that they've helped shape this movie and it's early enough that we as a studio are still comfortable with what they're doing. So that approach, I think, is probably partially informed by what went on with Han Solo, even if the specific pick of this director probably has nothing to do with that. But I also want to address the general concept. So Obi-Wan Kenobi movie, it's about 
freaking time! I actually was stunned that this hasn't been announced before this. I mean, especially in terms of the fact of they, after the Josh Trank Boba Fett thing got completely canned, and they assigned no one new to that, so it was clear they weren't picking up the pieces of the Boba Fett project, and they still was, you know, talk of this other nebulous project that they wouldn't name. And everyone always kind of assumed it was Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, it's the obvious thing to do. And I think, it, much like in the case of Rogue One, it's a chance to tell a different kind of story, which is, I, I've said before, it's what I want out of the spinoffs in terms of these things. You can tell basically a Western, you, practically a samurai movie. You go small scale. You keep it contained to Tatooine. You have him j just dealing with a very localized menace. It wouldn't even have to cost that much. You shoot in a desert, use practical creature effects. And Ewan McGregor's been saying for years that he'd be happy to come back and play the part again. Why has this taken so long? And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there going, if you just listen to the fans, we could have already had this movie by now. Except that I actually tend to be of the mind that I think one of the most dangerous things that a creative entity can do is to listen excessively to the fans because fans, we may know what we want, but a lot of times what we want isn't good for us. And sometimes, to be frank, what fans really, really want is just a flat-out bad idea. There's a lot of fans that want the X-Men in the MCU. I already did a video on why I think that's a bad idea. There were a lot of fans who, after Prometheus, were like, go back to doing just aliens again, and they did. And I don't think that was a good idea either. I mean, you shouldn't ignore the fans, and you definitely shouldn't take them for granted. Don't show them contempt, but be careful about fans dictating what you do. So on that level, I, I guess I'm a little bit more forgiving of the fact that it did take them this long because it was the thing that all the fans were going, just do this! And I think you should, as a creative entity, and I know Lucasfilm is a corporation and it's all about money, etc., but they're still putting out a creative product. They, if, if that's what you do, you need to be careful about just going, oh, well, we'll do what the fans want because we can be dumb and we can be loud as we're dumb. But this is a fan idea that I think is a good fan idea. This really is kind of a duh. And while the attachment of Stephen Daldry doesn't immediately make a ton of sense to me, I'm really curious to see what he's going to bring to this. I mean, he's he's so not the guy that I would think for this, and yet is clearly a guy with talent. It makes me go... I'm really curious about what a guy like that is going to bring to a project like this. So bring it on. Let's get going. Lock down you and McGregor now and make sure that's all in place. And let's move this thing forward. I want to see the, what's next on this. And I, I do hope it works because, and, and more than that, I hope it goes smoothly. Because if the Han Solo movie doesn't manage to pull a Rogue One, it managed to be good despite a very rough and bumpy road getting there, Lucasfilm might decide that these movies aren't worth the bother because so far, first with Rogue One, and again, I like the finished product of Rogue One, but it had a heck of a development going along the way. And now with the Han Solo movie, the, the production on these things has not been smooth. And if they, if the, if the Obi-Wan movie, which again is the slam dunk, no duh, why wouldn't you do that first move to make, if that doesn't go off smoothly either, Lucasfilm may go, okay, look guys, we are making a profit off these, but these are turning into a big headache, let's just stick to the main ones. And maybe this is greedy of me, I don't want that. As long as the spinoffs can have a distinctly different feel from the main numbered saga, I want them to keep trying because I I want something like a Western or a samurai style movie with Obi-Wan Kenobi that's going to have this more isolated lone hero feel and as opposed to the epic scale. I want these different kinds of stories in Star Wars for as long as Disney, is will Disney and Lucasfilm are willing to make them. So I hope this one goes smoothly so that they'll be willing to keep trying that experiment as for as long as uh, as we keep going, I suppose. So those are my thoughts on that news. What are your thoughts on it? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter at Council of Geeks. Give a listen to the Council of Geeks podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher. And until next time, this council is adjourned.